Howdy, it is I, Junk, back once again. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. Thanks for asking. You know, spent a week in Philly for work. And I'm going to try to record this very quickly because my clan has been sending me invites. So I asked for 10 minutes to record this quick voiceover. I had a comment asking what do I think about the new event. And let's go in there right now. As you can see, I've spent some cash and tokens, which feels just terrible to do. But uh, you can also tell by these numbers here at the bottom, using the magic keyboard, let's just indicate these numbers, that Pixonic has gone for a different reward scheme here, where you don't see any components. Doesn't mean any, the rewards are any good. I mean, how many Gothic Fainters can one man possess? Actually, if it, will it tell me how many Gothic Fainters do I actually have? Only 18. And regular Fainters? 13. Well, the Gothic Fainter, quite popular in my inventory. Uh, so you get whole prizes. The tokens are therefore correspondingly harder to get because the level of useless garbage prize they're going to try to foist upon you is higher. They can no longer give you part of a useless thing. They have to give you the whole useless thing. And in reward, and like in return, you're going to spend much more to get each attempt at the useless thing. As you might be able to detect from the tone of my voice, I don't necessarily think the system is any better. I think it's not any worse. It's probably slightly better. But ultimately, they're going to keep giving you things you don't need. Like, let's get really real and really raw here. We aren't being shown, like, the loot table here. So we don't know what the probability of any of these individual things actually is. And knowing Pixonic and how probability and Pixonic have worked in the past, you will have an inventory full of things you don't need. And anything you actually want, you're not going to get. But I did have one person leave a comment saying they got a crisis on their first try. Which in the, is within the realm of possibility, you know remote possibilities are possible so I got a couple tokens let's just spin them and see what we get their animations are always good so we have auto <laughs> an immune amp and a nuke amp three things I don't need but if I had to pick one I'd pick auto because I use a lot of autopilot so what do we get I get a repair amp, fantastic. And how many repair amps do I have? 69, nice. So thank you, that was a great, great value for $8 we spent on that token. Let's try again. That was an $8 new camp, my 69th new camp, $8, oh, fantastic. <laughs> Three more things we don't need, and I get Trixie Hope. Well, I won't show you the number of Trixie Hopes I have. I promise you it is at least two dozen. I have a lot of Trixies, because until Otto, that was the most, you know, useful pilot, Trixie and Adrian, really. Not anymore. Now Trixie is kind of useless, because you can't actually use a repair amp on most of your bots, because you have to have quantum radar. So thanks for that. Try again. <laughs> I don't... Who cares? Oh, great. A repair amplifier. The 70th repair amp. Fa fantastic. So that's now $16 spent on two repair amplifiers. Just just magic this event. It's so good. Thank you so much, Pixonic, for this. Absolutely fantastic and not at all total garbage event. Yeah, okay. Whatever. And uh, let's spin. Your guaranteed prize is a spin on the next rigged loot box. Fantastic. Ugh. Yeah, the pilot would be the most useful of those three. Um, but again, I have three or four Herald Hans. I'm not opposed to it, but it's the thing I have the least copies of. Of course, Sinister Claw. I assure you, I have many Sinister Claws. How many do I have? 25. All right, so that was the light box. Let's go to the medium box now, which I'm sure will in no way be total garbage like the one that preceded it. Take a look at the loot table here. The Crisis, the pilot... And the Arden Emoji, so you can have a bugged robot that is cheating. Cruel Angler, so you can have a bugged robot that is cheating. 
the Gothic Mars. The Gothic Mars may be the last time they released a LE robot that wasn't just uh, a way of cheating. So, don't know what you did there, but let's have some more of that Gothic Mars energy for the next limited edition. And the Showdown drone, which I am kind of curious about. Um, clearly just made for the new robot here. But I could see this being really interesting on a Loki. <laughs> By interesting, I mean you want to make people upset. The weapon protector... <sighs> you know, I wouldn't mind it on on a behemoth if it didn't require me to use a stealth mod, which, why would you do that? So it's really just for the one robot they've got here. And it's hard... Here's the thing. The synergy between that drone and their new robot is pretty great with the permanent stealth. The problem is... If they nerf the robot, they're functionally nerfing your drone. And the cost of leveling the drone is so high right now, it's like $100 to level a drone, that I wouldn't invest the 100 bucks in a drone that really only has good synergy with like two or three robots. I could see Loki, I mean, maybe Pursuer, you could make an argument. And Crisis, so I just don't, I don't think it's a good investment. Get another Kestrel. I mean, even if they nerf that, the nerfed Kestrel at least is good for everything. Oh, great. A paint job, a drone. Watch. It's, I guarantee you it's going to be the drone. You know why? The drone is the least valuable thing, so it's got to have the highest loot table, right? Oh, no. Okay. Well, yeah, actually, that is pretty worthless, too. I wish I could show you how many of those I have. Well, let's go look. How many of those do I have? The sinister paint job for the angler. How many of those do I have? I've got seven. Great. So I only had six. That's so useful. If I ever decide I want to ri run more than one hanger of regular anglers, I'll have paint jobs. Oh, man. Man, that was a good use of $8. I'm so glad I spent money in this game. This is so this is so great. I don't at all want to kill myself, if that's what you're thinking. Captain Clyde, should you ever want to run more Mars? I surely don't. Another good $8 purchase there. What else we got? <laughs> two drones that you'd have to level, and it was a, through a paint job. Yeah. So eight. I have eight sinister paint jobs. Oh man, I'm getting close to that second hanger of regular anglers. Oh, it's magic spending money in this game. I'm so glad I do it. Great. Fantastic. I get another spin at a loot box that will also be terrible. Oh, so lucky. So good to be here right now. Gothic Mars, a pilot, and a paint job. Well, don't care. They're all garbage, so... Thanks. This is my... It's not going to show me. I've got... At least five Gothic Marses, because I try to keep my robots at five of each one. Because otherwise, it's going to get even more. Ooh, there's actually the new drone. That's got to be a, a low loot percentage, so... Will I get it? No. No, I won't. No, I won't. Because this is terrible. So, I only got three of these because I was the least interested here. There's, I would like to get the Stellar Veyron from the Lucky Box, but you're never going to get it. So, I shouldn't say never. Eventually you will get it, but not anytime soon. So, let's just, let's just do this. Let's get through this misery. Frozen Scorn, Frozen Scorn, and Thor Components, and nothing. Nothing. So, that is what you can expect from this event. Nothing. The same you can expect from every other event. Absolutely nothing. It is designed to be an engine of misery, and nothing good will ever come from it. What else is there to talk about? Uh, one quick thing. I wanted to talk about the Titan pilots. Because we know what's going to happen with the Titan pilots. Because that's what happens with all of the pilots, and all of the things they release. They will release it. It will unbalance the game. They will then nerf the thing they unbalanced in order to restore the balance originally. What that means, essentially, like... Let's, let's talk about the spear. They release the spear. It's pretty solid. It's a solid weapon. It's pretty good. They release Otto Schreier as a pilot. Otto Schreier has a 35% increase in the firing speed of the spear uh, and other radiation and plasma weapons. The spear with the Otto Schreier is straight broken. I've got videos on the channel where I'm running a Destrier with 
with Otto Schreier and Spears, and I'm getting kills in Champion League with the Destrier. Pretty good indication that whatever you've created is maybe a bit overtuned. So, having now unbalanced the game with the pilot, their solution is then to rebalance the game. How do they rebalance the game? Do they remove the spear from the list of weapons auto can affect? No, they slow down the spear so the effective firing rate, when it was okay-ish, you could only get by having auto as a pilot. So now, the weapon is basically useless unless you're running auto. They rebalance the game, and that was only slightly terrible because the spear was only out for a short time at the time they released auto. When they release the Titan pilots into the game, it's going to unbalance the Titans. And the way they're going to restore balance to the game is to nerf the Titan so it only performs at the level it used to when you have a perfectly set up pilot. And what this amounts to is taking away what you had and selling it back to you with extra steps. I'm going to say it again because I want you to hear it. The Titan pilots, when they nerf the Titans in order to make the, t the pilots balanced with their new abilities, what they're doing is taking away what you had and selling it back to you. Does that sound familiar? It should. Because that's also how Mark III tokens worked. You could just have a Mark III before without a token. They took that away so they could sell it back to you in the form of tokens that are harder to get and more expensive. Does that sound familiar to you? Because it's what they did to you with the drones. You had max drones, plenty of them, for multiple hangers. They took it away, and now if you want to max a drone, it's going to cost you 100 bucks. They'll give you the drones for free. The drones are easy to come by for the most part, but it's 100 bucks to max them. And if you want to max a new one, Oh, good luck to you, because you know they're going to nerf them. So you're just setting your money on fire. Now, for some of us, that's fine. But it's a lousy way to run a game for other people. And I think it's terrible. <laughs> I think it kind of sucks. I think it shows a fundamental disrespect of our intelligence, that they think we don't notice this is what they're doing. Every new thing they add is, is a process of them taking something away and paywalling it behind something new. So, the monetization of the game, having had nothing they can create, has now been to cut away pieces of what you had and then add new price points to advance through it. It's sick, it's cynical, it's lazy, it's low IQ. And honestly, I'm, I'm kind of sick of it, in case you couldn't tell. I know I'm very subtle about my my dislike of it. Well, I thought if we got anything useful, you know, by some quirk of fate, if we had anything useful in these pulls, we would use them to add to the robots and go run them. But since we didn't, let me just tell my clan, I'm ready to run right now, and let's get into a game. And we are dropping in on Valley Map. Let's start with uh, the DK links. I had made this links just for a meme with, uh, I think I had Chimera on it, and then I switched it to the lasers. And the lasers were fine, but how many lasers do you need really to run in one hangar? So then I put the decay on it. I mean, I liked that it had a little bit extra range, and the mods on it, I, I put the mods on it that I put on, like, Behemoths. It's got two immune amps and a nuke amp. New camp? Yeah, pretty sure. Might be a repair amp, but I'm misremembering. Ah, little dance here with Murray. And we're actually facing a trio on the red team. Not my favorite to be a random against a trio, but it is what it is. I thought I had a good shot with some team support against the Nether, but I don't have a great shot against the Fenrir and a Fenrir with. Oh, no, and I see now, I'm, as I'm doing this, we're losing our home. So they returned the favor. <laughs> and as much as I, I appreciate the teammates staying, staying there to cap it, love that. That's, uh, you know, hood, old school clan, talented clan. They know what they're doing. And uh, I think Murray feels some kind of way about his nether because he's, he's coming to pay me a visit. And it's a little... Laser versus Prisma Duel. 
And the short answer there is basically the, the lasers will win anywhere within their range. Uh, yeah, the Amugi got popped by the by the quantum radar on the behemoth. But yeah, if, if the lasers can reach the prismas, the lasers will win. But it doesn't take long for the prismas beyond that range to erase a behemoth. And you can see, I always, when I'm in the behemoth, I always just shoot right into the reflectors on the on the uh, weather chickens. It doesn't do enough damage to stop me. I have noticed that, you know, with things short of the behemoth, shooting into the reflectors hurts more. <laughs> But the amount of damage it does is nothing compared to the amount of damage leaving the up will do. Whereas, uh, in anything more fragile, it doesn't seem to be a good trade-off. You know, what, all, what else isn't fragile that you can actually do that with? At least in my experience, Ravana. Ravana doesn't take enough damage to justify not taking out the weather chicken. And I, I think we've already accomplished, like the Behemoth has already done the mo thing I mainly wanted to do. Oh. I'm getting paid a visit by Anoibot here. A little, a little lag there. Uh, Anoibot trying to sneak up behind, not super effectively. It's very hard to sneak up behind a behemoth. I, I will say, I've seen a lot of people try to sneak behind a behemoth, usually in Skyros. And kind of the deal with the behemoth, right, is you're sitting back, watching the game fold in front of you, and you've got a giant tag over your head with your name on it. So it's very tough to try to sneak behind a behemoth. Yeah, this Lynx took a took a peek, decided he didn't like the taste, and went back behind the, back behind there. And so, I, I'm seeing a lot of these of these laser seraphs too. I don't think that's a bad build if you're going to run a seraph, but I wouldn't run a seraph. Kills me that like I didn't have my quantum radar up early enough that I could take out that Imugi Imuji. Sorry, Kitty City. But I was saying before, I think the behemoth is already having the desired effect. We've got much of the team contained to the quadrant where the behemoth isn't. And that alone is... It's an unquantifiable but hugely important piece of gameplay. And a hugely important advantage on gameplay. Where we really do have a great deal more room to move, just by virtue of there being a behemoth here. And I'll start to peek in a little bit look for, is there something I can do? Is there something useful I can add? Really want to get that, uh, Loki. You don't, you don't want a Loki running around. You really don't. Feeling good about that. Yeah, I don't want to go in and get myself into the radius of the angler if I don't have to. Because it's not gonna take long to get rid of the angler when he comes out, so why put yourself in a situation where you can't? Let's get rid of, uh, sorry, that's my second, uh, second time I had to take out a Noibot. I think I've annoyed a Noibot. And we're getting to the point where you can see, we're down to four, it looks like. Maybe somebody's just waiting to drop in, but I'm gonna go in anyway. Because the beacon advantage they've managed to accumulate by us sitting back is pretty severe. But that's the thing, is like, don't confuse a team sitting back and letting you hold beacons for having the advantage. Ooh, finally, Beyond Godlike. Would like to get that living legend, so... Okay. I see, okay. We've got two behemoths and one Fenrir. If I want the living legend, there's only one bot I can get. <laughs> but he's hiding right now, so... Um, yeah, don't confuse a team s sitting back and letting you hold beacons for you winning. <laughs> because if they're taking out more of your robots than they're losing as you hold, they could just be softening you up. Here we go. Let's get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Living legend. That's what I'm talking about. That's right, sometimes I like to camp up in the face, but like, now I'm thinking, oh yeah, see that we didn't, we weren't watching home, that's not good. And we might actually need these beacons because we let the beacon bar get out of hand. So that's one. And it's our old friend Murray, and I do mean old friend, like Murray Death. 
This is a guy who I've been seeing the entire time I played, even from back in the day. Also, like, incredible clan loyalty, which I would totally respect. So now we're getting to the point where I think they may realize they're in trouble. Another one of these Seraph laser builds. Like, I understand it's a good build if you're going to run a Seraph. You know, comma, why are you running a Seraph? Why are you running a Feather Destrier? The most, like, destructible build. Yeah, I'm not going to let him get that. So I hate to ditch basically a full health luchador, but... No, can't. Sorry. Nice try. Can't permit that. And uh, in comes my teammate with full enthusiasm for the... Uh... <laughs> oh, man. If you had been here just 20 seconds ago, man, that would have been really good. And yeah, we got the dub. Just take a look over here. 12 kills, 4 beacons. And lovely things in the expert crate. I think the crates have gotten better, my imagination. And yeah, that was, you know, a combination of, of knowing when to camp and knowing when not to camp. And we even had a, a sixth guy who, I guess, dropped less than a million damage and no beacons. But yeah, I thought we did pretty well there. So... If you've made it to the end of the video, thank you for staying this long. If you're a dog or cat living at home, you're a good puppy or kitty, and I'm sure your parents will be back with a treat for you really soon. And I'll talk to you later.